You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Halt and Catch Fire After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Halt and Catch Fire After Show. Hey there, Halt and Catch Fire fans. What's going on? Welcome to AfterBuzz TV. Talking about Season 1, Episode 5, Adventure. I'm Matt Lieberman. Join me as always. Fantastic panels here. Jesse Klein is here. Hey, how's it going, everyone? Yell Teagle's here. Hey, everybody. Isaac Johnson's here. Hey, Coder Monkeys. Yeah. Ah. We couldn't be more excited to talk to you about this latest episode. Of course brought to you, as always, by Maria Menounos, our founder and her fantastic book, The Every Girl's Guide to Diet and Fitness, available on Amazon and bookstores nationwide. So, so happy for her success on the New York Times bestseller list. That's awesome. Yeah, it is awesome. It is awesome because it also, not only does it support her, it supports us, uh, and it supports health and fitness, which, of course, everybody wants, even when you're a coder monkey, even <laughs> when you're you're busy drinking orange soda all night playing adventure. Eating right. cheese whiz. Yeah. Or eating the... Uh, 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 ceiling or roof roof sandwiches roof, roof sandwich, sandwiches roof sandwiches or big old sides of brisket <laughs> big old sides of brisket big old sides or, of brisket uh, or texas sushi yeah, Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> not 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 a, not a good deal so you know i really really enjoyed this episode it felt Different. I feel like now that we've okay, we've got the BIOS written. We've got you know computer development underway. Mm -hmm. We're de designing all the software. We got some new characters. It feels like we're getting into the next stage of the series, and also yeah. getting to meet Joe Senior and kind of pulling back that curtain a little bit. I think was vitally needed at this stage in the series. How do you guys feel? I loved that we got to see the backstory and learn a little bit more about Joe and Cameron and everybody. That was amazing. I've been waiting for this episode. It was mm -hmm. wonderful. Yeah, Isaac? It was a lot of fun. I thought it was like probably maybe the most fun episode that there has been, especially with all the, the newbies that kind of came in there, Yo-Yo. Yo-Yo's my fave. Yeah. I love me some Yo-Yo. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I thought I thought it definitely like injected a lot of energy into the series. Like we like it's it's been so dark and sad. Like mm -hmm. there've been so many like fights yeah. and like tension. There's so much anger in this yeah. show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just to have like these new characters and to kind of see like Cameron out of her element mm -hmm. and see like Joe in his element was really cool to see cuz for most of the show Joe is kind of doing what Joe does best, mm -hmm. and it looks good. And it's like cool to see like how good he is at being a businessman. And businessman, 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 a businessman, businessman. Yeah. businessman. It's good to see him it's as like a Spiderman. Uh, yeah, a Spiderman. Yeah, <laughs> Joe, Joe, Joe Spiderman. Joe Spiderman. Yeah, yeah. Spiderman. My accountant, Lieberman. Joe Spiderman. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so it was good to see him at like in his element. It was cool to see that. Yeah. It's it's funny, you know, because, like, we get to see him at his best business-wise and doing the shtick. But now that we know that it is shtick, and yeah. we have for a few weeks, mm -hmm. I want, I feel like we need something to attach ourselves more to this character and to want him to succeed. Not just because he's bringing all these other people with him, but, like, I, I'm starting, every week I empathize with Joe less yeah. Especially mm -hmm. after hearing everything that we heard from his father. Now, we we also kind of get from Cameron that Joe Sr. may have been lay, laying it on a bit thick. Mm -hmm. uh, so it may not be reliable information, but it also seems pretty reliable. I don't, I don't know. I don't. Joe Sr. just seemed to me like older, less caring Joe to me. Mm -hmm. Like I think, like I think Cameron's. Number one, Cameron has the best BS detector I've ever seen yeah. mm -hmm. a character have. And, like, I think she realized that all he was doing that entire time, like, every move he made was just to manipulate her. Like, that's all he was doing was just trying to manipulate her. Like, and knows that, like, like knows the things to say to try and like get people to feel a certain way. So like when he pushed the daddy button, when he yeah. when mm -hmm. he mentioned, yeah, he absolutely knew. Yeah. yeah, he absolutely knew what he was doing. I think yeah. Joe Junior, I guess we can call him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, 
pretty much, well, I mean, obviously, the dad is a manipulator. Joe is a manipulator. I think the dad is a master manipulator, probably, because yeah. probably, his was a little harder to detect. Yeah. But that's pretty much where Joe's learned it from. So he's, it seems like he's trying to be his father. See, that's someone. what's very interesting mm. to me, is looking at the, the, the quality of Joe Sr.'s deception. And it honestly, as fake as it comes off, Joe Jr.'s... Uh, you know, kind of deception is fueled more by emotion. He's yeah. more of an exposed nerve, and mm -hmm. you get more of his anger versus, I feel like, Joe Sr., uh, he plays all of his emotions close to the vest. Like, it, Joe comes off as this guy who is kind of an emotionless vampire, but it's really, he's he feels so much that he's had to numb himself to survive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think Junior is just trying to be as much like Senior as he can, but he hmm. can't because Senior's been doing it a long time and he can, you know, hide everything. Yeah. Yeah, and if you don't think that Senior knew exactly who Cameron was and hasn't researched her before mm -hmm. he came down to Texas, like, I think he knew, I think before she even entered that room, I think he knew that her dad died in Vietnam and, like, all of that kind of stuff. I think... I think he knew exactly how to how to push her. He Googled her. Yeah, he, yeah, he, yeah, he invented don't. Google. He invented then, Google just to research him. the girl that his son's yeah. sleeping so with. So first he had to upload <laughs> information onto Google. Well, he and hits then that like research it. he hits that like he says, "Oh, you're the prodigy that my people were talking about." Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they call it a prodigy. Oh, I don't think so either. Yeah. Also, he name checks Ada Lovelace like her hero. Yeah, yeah. I think he's. He he reads her from a mile away, trailblazing female coder, yeah. you know, doesn't really conform to the current standards of, uh, of beauty or well, of socialization. Won't wear a bra. Won't ever Never. wear a bra. Good for her. Good yeah. for her. <laughs> and for everyone out there in the internet. Except for those that... Need a bra, I guess that's a good for them, and or they choose to wear a bra. And that, those, that's good no, for those no, not I'm, I'm not on board with that. I've heard that. there can be we're some rebels. bad problems. I don't know anything personally about this. We're but. rebels. Yeah, we're all rebels. Mavericks. All right. Um, so uh, we're we're gonna get more into that scene a little later on, but let's let's kind of jump in from the very beginning. So we kind of see these contrasting, uh, sort of you know, waking up sequences between Joe and Cameron. Cameron in her hotel, she's been traveling, she's well rested, she's excited to mm -hmm. get back to work. She's exposed. Mm. She's exposed. This is uh, maybe the first female exposure that we've had on the show. We've had a lot of topless men. Mm -hmm. We've not had a topless woman We've before. not had enough of either. Yeah. Uh, some well, of us have not some, had enough. Some of us yeah, have not had enough. <laughs> or we'll maybe never have enough. <laughs> you know, I, the show gives it as it needs it. Hmm? It needs more. Let's move All right. on. Yeah. Yeah. So Joe is still recovering from getting yeah. the snot beat out of him. Whooping, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, just bruises all over his back. And it kind of just it, it shows that maybe he's trying to retain his discipline. And I think swinging that bat and swinging for the fences is part of maintaining the almost zen-like discipline that he has. And not zen in terms of peace, but zen in terms of focus. Mm -hmm. Um... Mm -hmm. That, that he has and, you know, overcoming his injuries to swing it regardless and basically saying, I will let nothing stop me. I'm going to steamroll into this day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, which I think is necessary because he knows he has this meeting coming up where he's pitching uh, he's pitching the the, uh, the new Cardiff PC to retailers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, or the, what is it, the 886 or 8086, I think is what they call it. Right. Yeah. Um, I, well, it was interesting because I noticed that he had really good form. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were talking, like, yeah, maybe he played baseball. And then we hear later that his dad is the one who taught him form. And he, and he was saying that he refused to learn and he had to basically, like, force him into having good form. Yeah, he wasn't much of a natural. So yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, like, maybe with the... Like, with the bat and those bruises, maybe those bruises were also, like, him fighting like what people want his form to be like it was kind of like a, a parallel story like that's what they kind of represented I like that I'm also thinking that maybe and, and let me know if you guys think that this tracks I think that having his father force him to have this perfect form him maintaining it is him also 
maintaining his anger mm -hmm. and reminding himself yeah. why he's going to beat the snot out of his dad mm -hmm. in the business world yeah. is basically, you know, you didn't let me have a life of my own. You forced me to have the life that you wanted. Now I'm going to beat you and I'm going to take away everything you ever had. Ugh. I like that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I like that too. Pretty reasonable. It's pretty awesome. I just want, I just want him to, I just want him to let us in just a little bit. And I know it's 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 a calculated risk on the part of Cantwell and Rogers or showrunners, you know, in an attempt. I think that they're not going to let us through the veil with Joe for a while, if ever. And I, it's kind of seeing how far can we take an unsympathetic. Protagonist, because it, it, you know, at least on Mad Men, and and I know that the show gets compared to Mad Men a lot. They're yeah, both AMC yeah. shows featuring a charismatic and potentially dark, uh, you know, kind of salesman mm -hmm. creative with a mysterious past, yeah. right? Uh, you know, with Don Draper, we got to see who he was with his family. He had a little more empathy, and then very very quickly, his past came to catch up with him, and we saw him exposed. Um, and I'm wondering when it, or if. Will ever get Joe exposed because I think it has to happen at some point if we're going to continue to really love him in this journey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think you're forgetting. Last episode we established that the protagonists are Donna and Cameron. That's yeah. true. True. Yeah. And Debbie. And Debbie. And, and Debbie. Debbie. Let's yeah. not forget Debbie. Donna, Cameron, Debbie. Looked adorable this episode. She did. She did. Yeah, we'll pink post. Pink post. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so Cameron returns uh, to Cardiff to find a whole big squad of code monkeys, mm -hmm. a whole bunch of coders. Code monkeys. Yeah, mm -hmm. led by uh, by her new manager, Steve, Steve, Steve. Yeah. Uh, who's you know he's he's got something up his butt. He's a little he's a little uh, it, well, frankly, he's just doing his job. <laughs> yeah. He's not okay. doing anything wrong. He's a manager, but yeah. to be placed on uh, uh, doing. Doing drivers, doing something that she feels isn't really isn't really glamorous. After writing the entire bios yeah, and having all this happen without even telling her ahead of time, mm -hmm. she's obviously pissed, and she's going to rail against it no matter what. And yeah. she starts immediately causing dissent by uploading adventure to the mainframe. Mm -hmm. Colossal cave adventure. Colossal cave adventure to the mainframe. The cool kids call it just adventure. Just adventure. Yeah, just it's just adventure. adventure. Well, I'm telling you what it's called, though. <laughs> right. Uh, I'm not a cool kid, clearly. <laughs> no, I'm, you're very cool. I'm edgy. You're well, you're edgy, <laughs> and you're well educated. <laughs> oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's good, Matt. See? I see what see I do? That I, I do. I, that's what I do. That's what I'm here for. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but she's, she's already kind of setting something in motion. She's trying, even if it didn't occur to her that this was going to be how she would take control of this coding team, I think that she's definitely trying to see who she can trust among this team. Yeah. She's kind of mm -hmm. placing a test before them to figure out who's going to be useful to her as she tries to regain kind of her share of the control mm -hmm. of, uh, of Cardiff and of this project. Um, so she's not happy about it. Meanwhile, John and Joe are pitching the computer uh, to these retailers, and John Bosworth uh, <laughs> getting just big dogged by but Joe uh, in the same way that John had big dogged Joe a couple episodes ago mm -hmm. when uh, they were when uh, Joe was trying to get the, yeah, the, the, the investor, investment. Yeah. 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 Uh, back in episode two. I really like that Joe left him to hang there just long enough yeah. to where he felt the like, uh, who's really in control? That's, you know, obviously the big mm -hmm. struggle, power struggle there. I'm yeah. just a New York City carpetbagger. Yeah. 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 <laughs> How would I know? How would I know? But I love this discussion of the third shelf. And I love when people yeah. break mm -hmm. down that was cool. things that we see every day or that we saw back when, you know, there were far more computer stores uh, than there are potentially today. Mm -hmm. Circuit um, City. Yeah, Circuit City. <laughs> um, nobody beats the Wiz East Coasters. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but in any case, talking about where you stack the relative computers, before the Apple store even, when <laughs> Apple computers were still in a Comp USA or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, you have your IBM shelf, you have your second shelf of something that's flashy, and then you have your third shelf, and what do you put there? The kludge shelf. The kludge yeah. shelf. Gross. It sounds terrible. Right, yeah. and they're all there thinking they're looking for their kludge shelf mm -hmm. product, and he, I think, very masterfully 
makes these guys believe that if they take a huge risk with the card of PC, they will be considered visionaries and geniuses and reap the rewards that people labeled those labels certainly receive. Yeah. And it's a, I think it's a pretty masterful, if very kind of empty and showy pitch. It's like, it's all, it's not about appealing to your emotional side. Like that's the, the thing, like people who compare him to Don Draper, Don Draper is, is such a genius with marketing and with advertising because he appeals to people's emotional side mm -hmm. and to get them to feel something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Joe is all about appealing to your ego and, and kind of greed. and greed, manipulating yeah. you by tapping into your own greed and getting you to do what he wants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, who and wants it's, to make money? It's right. Make and money. it's a little creepy. It's why Gordon is so easily manipulated by him because mm -hmm. he has all of these like mm -hmm. he has the he wants to be greater than he is so bad that he'll latch onto him. Gordon has a lot of greed. I Gordon think. has a lot of greed. I think he also wants his ego inflated yeah mm -hmm. he, he has needs, a lot I mean, of pride he's, he's taking other people's uh he's taking credit for other people's work all the time left yeah. and right i think he just needs to be the one who did it he's hungry yeah. he's so hungry mm -hmm. for success mm -hmm. it's just kind of desperate yeah. yeah so um gordon comes home uh just for the morning just to say hi, not realizing that it's his father-in-law's birthday, mm -hmm. and he obviously hates his in-laws because they refused to fund him after his PC tanked. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, his father-in-law especially, they have a very tense relationship. And he shows off this brand new TV watch that he's given as a gift uh, to Gordon mm -hmm. and Donna's the daughter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the Kazoku. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Gordon makes this uh, wonderful comment, like, great, now they can watch more TV. They yeah. can watch TV they everywhere. They can watch TV all the time. Yeah, perfect. Uh, as I think that entire generation most definitely was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it plants a little bug in Gordon's head. We, his his father-in-law has this relationship with Kazoku. They have an exclusive deal to put these in the back of his catalogs. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fantastic. Also, things are going, at the beginning, things are going pretty well with Gordon and Donna. Like, the establishing thing is, like, yeah. him giving her a little pinch. Mm -hmm. yeah, a little comes pinch in on the touch. A little, little piece. Yeah. Well, I don't know if that's necessarily things going well or things being quiet and him thinking things going well. No, she's, she's she, like, has, like, a half smile and she, like, says thanks for coming. Yeah. Well, because she thinks that he's coming for the reason that he was supposed to. Yeah. Well, I said things started well with him. <laughs> so they ended well yeah. with right. him. Right. I would agree with that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, Gordon goes back to the office and he's working with his engineers and they're trying to figure out uh, how to make this PC possible and they're having a lot of trouble. It's not going to be able to be what was promised. However, Joe needs it to be exactly what was promised yeah. because he's he, he's gone so far out on a limb, there's no... There's no going back on it. We can't under-deliver. If we're going to be a successful company, we need to deliver or over-deliver. Figure it out. And uh, the wheels start turning. And Gordon yeah, realizes... Well, because well, he catches the one guy goofing off with the... With the screen. With the, yeah. with the screen. Yeah. And then he, you know, well, well he chooses Buddy out, right, first. Mm -hmm. and then, yeah. And then he finds the thing with the screen. Yeah, do you want to be pounding shiners at with three? Brian. With well, Brian, Brian at three o'clock? Brian, got yeah. into the episode. Just you want to be bowling without any proper shoes with Brian? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, no, it wasn't Brian. Randy, who, had Randy lost his shoes. All up, uh, it's okay. Yeah. That's, that's why they're fired. I was going to yeah. say, that's why they're not working. Yeah, why they're I no don't longer. remember any of mm -hmm. them. Except for Barry. Well, yeah, he yeah. says we can switch Except out for the, Barry. Uh, yeah. He says we can switch out the CRT for an LCD. And they're like, yeah. but that's like that's crazy expensive. There's no way we'd be able to afford it. How could we possibly get it for the price that we need? I, mean, I if know. You know it. Tick, 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 tick. Yeah. Now earlier at the house, uh, Donna's father, Gary, Gary invites Gordon. Thank you uh, <laughs> to to go play around <laughs> the golf. And uh, now Gary. Gordon takes him up on it and is completely shameless in his asking Zero about attack. it. Like, he doesn't even wait nine holes to, to bring this up. Mm -hmm. We don't know what hole this is. This oh, point. there's no way. They're they on a putting even... green. Uh, they're, he's talking about <laughs> letting people, like, that they don't have to let people play through. Because, okay, so, that's true. So mm -hmm. we know it's early on in the game. It is very like, early. First or second hole. Yeah. Yeah. You know, no so. I would say that Gordon has tact at this point. Yeah. Certainly no. not a smooth operator. And, and he's, None. And, and he's also the guy that basically broke his daughter 
daughter's dream. Like he yeah. broke Gary's like broke Gary's heart when the computer didn't work. Mm -hmm. or, and well, Gary's daughter's heart. He broke Donna's heart. And I'm sure that he blames Gordon 100% yeah. for that. Yeah, for sure. As he should. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he should. Gordon is not, was is not great for Donna right now. It's yeah. sad. It is. It's yeah. tragic to watch this marriage unfold. Like mm -hmm. you you keep wanting Gordon to to step up and be a husband. And he just, he just, he just isn't. <laughs> I do it. That's what I do when I, I say it. I want Gordon to sure step up is. and also be a better engineer. Mm. Yeah. I want him to be better at everything. Yeah. He disappoints me every episode. Right. Which and I feel bad for Donna because she's married to it. That's yeah. the thing that some, I feel like a portion of the audience might find frustrating. And I'd love it if people would reach out and let us know how you feel about it. Yeah. Is, you know, nice. is the, the reason why we concluded that Donna and Cameron are the are, are heroes in this story is because they're the ones who are right now the most dynamic and empathetic. Yeah. You know, uh, Gordon and Joe continue to just kind of like, all the goodwill we had in that very active pilot has just been slipping away, and I'm waiting for them to kind of turn that corner, mm -hmm. and it hasn't come yet. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting to have two main characters that are not likable, and then it makes everyone else a lot more likable in the show. Mm -hmm. Like, John, in any other show, would be a not very likable character, yeah. but because he's a, such a good foil for Joe... Like you end up just being like, I love this Texas guy. Yeah, <laughs> he he's also like just him. he's just so charming. Yeah. Toby Huss just does such an incredible job. Yeah, I right. love that scene at night where all the coders are oh playing adventure, and yeah. he calls them into his office. Oh, get in here! Yeah, yeah, get in here, all of you. Somebody's How do I get fine. out of this dang old cave? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Love yeah. it. Um, so obviously, Gordon asks Gary to help him out make this uh, Kazoku meeting happen. And uh, meanwhile, you know, Cameron, in her reaction to Joe bringing on this whole team and not including her in the decision and being very disrespectful, essentially sending her to Cleveland, so, or sending her to Cincinnati mm -hmm. so that he could do this behind her back, mm -hmm. she uh, reaches into his pocket um, and he's like, what are you doing? And she's like, I'm taking this thing we have off the table. Because so suck sad. it. Puts him on freeze. Yeah, yeah. I love that because he deserves it. He totally yeah. deserves he it. He deserves it. But I'm sad. Fine. Mm -hmm. um, what, what were you sad that you didn't get a scene, or what are we sad about? That's what I'm sad about. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> she just wants more Lee Pei sex. And well, yeah. I think yeah. Joe calling Joe calling it this thing. We, if you think you're gonna get special treatment because of this thing we have, mm -hmm. instead of saying like he could have said we're sleeping together or something, mm -hmm. which is not really better, but calling it the thing is kind of probably hurtful to Cameron, so she twists it back on him. I like that. Not even I, Marriage Corner, Common Sense Corner. Common Sense Corner. Common yeah. Sense Corner. Yeah. Common, common Sense common Corner. Sense corner. <laughs> I feel like he's gonna, not to predict anything, but I feel like he's gonna get so emotionally attached, and she's gonna be like, what is wrong with you? Like, this was hmm. just sex. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I've yet to see proof. Well, there, to see. There's a tiny bit of proof at the end, which I know this is skipping forward, but when he says, I noticed you took your things out of my apartment, mm -hmm. he looked pretty bummed about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But if we're skipping all the way to the end, uh, she seemed real into how he was destroying that dots. Oh, yeah. She seemed She's real She's really into turned it. on by anger. Yeah, yeah. she, she <laughs> was real isn't? into it. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's, let's not skip yeah. too far yeah, ahead. Right. Uh, before we move on, I'm just going to talk quickly about iTunes. People, 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 don't skip ahead, okay? You know what I'm going to say. I say it every week. Why? For good reason. Because your ratings and your comments are the way that we pay our bills. Those ratings and those reviews on our app. After Buzz shows on iTunes, our comments on YouTube are how we attract sponsors to our wonderful network. So anything that you can do, it doesn't cost a dime, only takes a second. Go to iTunes, rate and review the shows you listen to or that you watch on YouTube. It really helps us out. It gives us great feedback to help us improve the shows, and it helps keep the lights on and the doors open. So, you know, we put out over 60 hours of free content a week. Let's keep that train rolling. I think we can all do it together. I appreciate collaboration. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. go Take care of it. We love you. Thank you. Yeah, no shout outs? Oh, well. There are no new reviews this I was going to say, speaking yeah. of shout outs, yeah. I, I got corrected this week. Ooh, um, Isaac. It was not by Mrs. Johnson for Cor a change. Correction um, Corner with Isaac. Correction, correction corner. corner with Isaac well, Johnson. Last week I might have made a claim. Or yeah, I, I remember. That the mm -hmm. Doherty threshold was not a real thing, that it was made up. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. 
turns out the Doherty threshold is real. <gasps> Snap. Kelsa, thank please. You. I want to thank thank Willie Harris Jr., or at Willie Harris on Twitter, for mm -hmm. tweeting a very informative link to me. Thank you. About the Doherty threshold. Wonderful. Well, so you I'm can, I'm you can be part of the show, too. Can, will, will you tweet that out after the show? Yeah, um, I'll, I'll tweet it again. I tweeted it this week, but I will tweet it yeah. one more time. I am relieved. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I am, too, because it was such a fascinating yeah. idea. I'd yeah. hate for it to be fake. Yeah. Well, because I've heard that halt and catch fire, that term, or that, mm -hmm. you that's know, the, the, the premise of the show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've heard that that's also not real. No, that's, that's a that's real thing. That's okay. a real thing, yeah. Like, yeah. Google it. I... Look at, it's, I, there's like, there have been like on, several sources that were saying yeah. that it was like a, a fictional premise. I'm like, no. Mm -hmm. no. Well, the, the premise is straight. fictional, but the, the concept of the halt and catch fire command within a computer is very, very real. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, Cameron goes to Joe's place to take some of her stuff. Uh, well, even mm. before that, um, Joe finds out that his father is in town, mm -hmm. yeah. and he sets up a meeting, a lunch, a one o'clock meeting at his hotel, and he goes and just kind of like stares at him from outside, mm -hmm. just almost hand against the glass, Daddy. Yeah. A little Travis action. Yeah, I was yeah. about to say like Travis. <laughs> <laughs> he was so Travis. Yeah. He was so Travis. Daddy, exactly love me. Travis, I can't face you until I'm a success, Daddy. <laughs> I love you, Daddy. I hate you, Daddy. I don't remember any of this dialogue. It's a, it, was it was all there. It was yeah. there. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, just a lot of a lot of pain and a lot of remorse. Yeah. But still. It kind of immature. He's not able to face him, and he stands him up. Mm -hmm. He goes so far as to go there, but he stands him up. Do we think that he changed his mind, or that he never intended to go inside? I think he changed his mind. Yeah, yeah. I think I bet. I bet he was gonna try. I I bet those bellhops are really upset with him, mm -hmm. just because that's two times in this episode he goes and he's like, "I'm just gonna yeah. be here for a second. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just there for one second, and, and then he like, gets back ah, in his car. This guy should at least yeah. tip us or something. <laughs> we can't just have a Porsche here right in front. And he, can just he just it. parked it there. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. that was the other thing. He didn't give anybody the keys. Yeah, nope. but but I think I think he definitely thought he was going to go and talk to his dad. Mm -hmm. uh, and he sees him, and he's like, ugh, mm -hmm. no. That no, mas. Yeah. Ugh. Um, so, you know, Cameron goes over to Joe's place to grab her stuff because she's leaving. Mm -hmm. um, and she finds Joe Sr. there mm -hmm. waiting for her son. With a baseball bat. With a baseball bat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that he gave him. You know, uh, and how did he get in the building? Well, you know, you apply enough pressure, you talk with enough attitude, you have enough money, you can get anywhere. Yeah, if you say something with the right authority, you get what you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. And uh, that's a lesson that he passed down to his son mm -hmm. very, very fervently, mm -hmm. I believe. Yeah. Um, he took that one to heart. Yes. Yeah. So they kind of start to have this dialogue. And I think that, you know, Cameron is obviously very curious about this guy, yeah. um, he immediately starts laying it on thick, talking about uh, talking about Lovelace, uh, kind of like buttering her up, realizing that you know, oh my God, he says he's going to be on a plane with Bill Gates and yeah. he wants to know his stuff and he's turning mm -hmm. to me for advice. Mm -hmm. You just dropped that wow. name. Can yeah, I pick oops, that up for you? Yeah. Did I, is that a Bill Gates? Gates? Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, you, I don't want my Always Bill Gates to get this. dirty. I <laughs> keep dropping him. You put him. it on the floor. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> yeah. Terrible treatment of Bill Gates. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, they start. we l learn some things about her background and about Joe potentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we have to take everything with a grain of salt, but we know that Cameron's father was in Vietnam mm -hmm. and that he passed away or potentially something just as painful when she was very young. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and, you know, it, kind of, it affects her definitely. She doesn't like to think about it. Mm -hmm. So it, part of me wonders if it was worse than uh, dying in Vietnam, as, as terrible as that is. Just because it, it happened a world away versus something that's far more intimate that I feel like would have produced that reaction because she's yeah she like you know, went to the other room and yeah like, like had like had to have a moment to herself. Mm -hmm. Well, I imagine it must have done terrible things to her mother and to you yeah. know her family unit. It's entirely possible that her home situation deteriorated so completely after that that she had to leave within a few years. Yeah, that's mm. true. It's interesting. I was thinking about it because. I was thinking about when Joe got so upset that Gordon's wife was helping mm -hmm. them with the with the programming mm -hmm. and like helping them retrieve it. And then in this episode, seeing Joe get super upset that it was uh, Gordon's father-in-law, like he he gave him such a dirty look, 
And I was like, oh, it, it makes so much sense. Like, he doesn't want family part of the business. Mm-hmm. Like, he doesn't mm-hmm. want any family part of the business. He likes loners. Yeah, and, and like, so, like, and having to rely on family, I think, is, like, poisonous to Joe. And so, mm-hmm. and, and you kind of see why with his dad here interacting with Cameron and, like, trying to do a, like, manipulate Cameron you can kind of see why he has such like a, a a strong reaction whenever anyone's like oh yeah it was my father-in-law or my mm-hmm. wife or anything uh, like that. Uh, yeah, he just he gets so upset family bad yeah, yeah. Hate i guess that would make so much makes sense why he's so attracted to cameron because she is a loner yeah yeah, yeah. yeah we we don't know anything about her mom or if she has siblings mm-hmm. or if she's Gordon's long lost sister, that theory's still alive. It could be alive. <laughs> yeah, it could be, but I don't know. Or she gets, or she gets um, adopted. adopted. Yeah. Yeah. Or a butler situation. Or a butler si- <laughs> butler type situation. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, so Cameron's gathering her things, and uh, you know he kind of pushes it a little too far. It's a little too obvious. He he says something very rude, which is basically. Um, that she's going to, why would she turn down their offer just to oh, be yeah. a failure with another company? Um, and it's at this point where she's just like, okay, bro, let me tell you how this is. Yeah. Well, she figured it out. I think the reaction to the, the dad stuff was real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then when she's sitting in the room there, they go back to a scene where she's kind of like, looks around and kind of like, Oh my God! He's mm-hmm. like, yeah. he's joing me. He, yeah. he, he's, yeah. he's just way this better guy is at totally it. Totally joing me. Yeah. Joe yeah. McMillan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's just way better at it because sex is off the table and because there's no emotion. Oh, it's so. just what? game. Am I the only one that felt like Senior was creeping? No, I don't. I don't yeah. think so. I think he was only if he was creeping, it was only to cause his son pain. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, that's what I, I, I meant. Yeah, mm. I had a when he kept at like the drink. He's like, mm. let's have a drink. I don't want to drink alone. There was a little bit of a. No, I think it was it was him just trying to coax her into like like you know you're important, you're mature. I want to have a conversation with you over a drink. I'll say that if he knows Cameron has father issues, yeah, like, she does. preying upon the fact that she like has issues with like men in authority and like father figures, mm-hmm. uh, he might have been playing that kind of card. But I don't think he ever had any intention of hooking up with Cameron. I disagree. I think he was creeping on her because he wanted to. Like her her job. Job. I just, yeah. I just think I, I can see where you get it from. Yeah. I mean, the, okay, like he invited her. Right I don't want to drink way. alone. Right. There's some something yeah. there, but you know, I prayer. don't think that was the goal. No, I don't I know that was the goal, but I can see where. I think it, it was. I think he played that card, saw that it wasn't happening, and kept moving. No, no, I definitely <laughs> think Yo-Yo was putting moves on camera. Oh yeah, oh, getting yeah. some cheese whiz in. <laughs> and yeah. then, like, you want to come to the bowling alley later? The radio station party. Yeah, Yo-Yo. Yeah. Um, God, I love Yo-Yo. Yeah, it's great casting. Great, great yeah. casting. Yeah, um, Bianca told us last week some really cool, yeah, colorful she did. characters. Mm-hmm. About, like, loving these guys. She yeah. warned us. Mm-hmm. She warned us. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So uh, we, we get out of that scene. We've got Gordon and Joe at dinner with the Japanese. Oh, and Gordon or, just or makes a, a complete <laughs> ass of himself. Like, to the point that I had to stop watching. Yeah. I was like, I, I after watching him in the bathroom and he keeps touching the guy and it's so obvious that yeah. he's that he's uncomfortable. He's talking to him in the men's room. And I just, I literally, I paused and it took me a few hours to get back to it because I was so mad at him. Yeah, Gordon's like the king, like sits on top of the mountain of screwing things up. Mm -hmm. Like he's so good at like setting himself up to be in a good situation Mm -hmm. and then really good at tearing it down as well. Yeah, we saw because he was having a really good tech talk, I guess, with the guy, the the designer, Mm -hmm. and just really kind of ringing bells. And then Joe sort of came in and closed with, like, well, we'll offer you a percentage or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking, like, these guys almost kind of like Batman and Robin, that little bit. That little situation there, and then Gordon comes into the bathroom, and I was just like face palm, like, yeah. dude, don't, because he stumbles in. It's like also, you had it, you had you it. No, in hand, man, and before, right before they get there, you see yeah. him already loading up. Yeah, he already had a drink, and we know he it, it, he should have just had Dr Pepper the entire the time. entire time. Yeah, I uh, knew I was like terrified when Joe was closing, 
that Gordon was going to make his mistake and interrupt. Uh -uh. And then as soon as we went to the men's room, I was like, even I know that <laughs> men don't talk to each other in the men's room, let alone touch each other mm -hmm. in yeah, the men's room. Yeah, that was a weird Even yeah, I know that. Welcome to Common Sense Corner with yeah, Yale Teagle. As men common bathroom. Sense Corner with Yale Teagle. Yeah, men bathroom etiquette from yeah. Yale Teagle. Yeah. You're Let's welcome. Hear. Tell yeah. us more about male bathrooms. You're not allowed to talk to each other. No, you're not. You're not allowed to look around. Nope. You look forward, and then you wash your hands Keep and leave. Keep your eyes mm -hmm. on the road. Yeah. You don't stand next to the dude if there are other open the urinals. Gap, the courtesy yeah. gap. Courtesy yeah. gap. These are the kind of things that I know as someone yeah. who never uses <laughs> yeah. a urinal. And, and especially, you do not put a hand on the shoulder when a man's got no. his own business in his hand. Yeah. No. So, take so care him. obviously, yeah. unless he's uh, weeping. <laughs> right. So obviously, <laughs> Joe then. Joe knows that it's over because they paid they paid the check, and Ooh. he dresses down Gordon in a in a pretty harsh way, but necessary. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's absolutely necessary. Yeah. You know, um, so Gordon goes and interrupts Gary's uh, game night yeah. in, and flat out begs. Before that, he calls Donna. He calls Donna yeah. and she yes. hangs up. She on hangs him. up on. Really him. nice. Yeah. Really nice. She's just she's done. No, she's not Donna she, to the rescue this time. She doesn't. It's not as rude as a like. Okay, bye, and then hangs up on him. It's as manipulative as taking the timer and making it ding next to the receiver yeah. mm -hmm. and being like, oh, the pies are done. I have to get them out of the oven. Yeah. And then hangs up on him. It was it was fantastic. Yeah, cool mm -hmm. moment for the character. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. Normally, she's kind of put down whatever she's done and, okay, yeah. what yeah. can I do? And then yeah. Hunt calls. Yeah, he does. does. Before, sorry, before uh, we get to Hunt, I just want to say uh, with the bird killing that yeah. we saw, mm -hmm. and I had said that I think that that was her saying, I'm done putting up with this yeah. S. Yeah. Yep. And mm -hmm. so that we sought with the pies. Yeah. 100%. I just wanted pointed that I was yeah. right. So, yeah. you know, Hunt had dressed <laughs> her down. Run. Hunt had dressed her it's down earlier. Down. He was very rude um, in, in a way that she did not deserve because he was the one who couldn't find yeah. the report in the midst of a more extensive report that she didn't even need to necessarily do. She mm -hmm. was just being diligent. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he calls her and he's like, you know, hey, I just wanted to apologize. I was wrong. I should never have treated you that way. It's fantastic work. Um, and she needs a little buttering up right now because yeah. life isn't great. Yeah, um, and she takes solace in this little conversation where they're talking about vodka and pie crust, which I've always heard makes it flakier and, and, and just better. I've heard it, I've heard it a, a hundred times. I've never gotten a chance to try it because I don't make pie crust. Who are all these bakers you're talking to? <laughs> yeah, I've I, uh, one of my exes, all of her friends were in food. Mm. Um, were chefs or bakers okay. or not stuff actually like in that. food. Just okay. they were <laughs> no, in the food industry. In the food I industry. Some of the the light like, flicker. Wait, they're in food. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! This we not, ate all of her. What friends. are the implications? This is not the Game of Thrones after buzz. No, <laughs> yeah. who was put in food? Oh, <laughs> oh, all right. Anyway, um, so uh, <laughs> negative comments. So during that conversation, uh, when Donna mentions, you know, I'm making these pies and whatever, Hunt, he's that sly dog. Oh man, I love peach pie. Uh, I love. Wouldn't peach that pie. sly? Wouldn't, wouldn't that sly? sly? And you know, if it, if there's any left. You know, save, save me, me a, a slice. slice. Maybe you could, <laughs> if you wouldn't mind, save me a slice. Wow. I feel bad for anyone was, listening. Yeah. You guys sound so mm -hmm. creepy. Well, I don't. It wasn't subtle at all. <laughs> no. no, it was. We, we understood wait, the undertones. Wait, was yeah. he not talking just about moist peach pie? Um, <laughs> welcome to Married Man Corner. <laughs> Married <laughs> Man Corner. Can you tell us about peach pie. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna tell us. I will not tell you about any peach pie that I've tasted. Yeah, please but, don't. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, Let me I tell thought, you about. Peach I thought was. Will you tell us about peach pie? Not. Oh, right. I thought there was an obvious, well, from the moment you see Hunt in the scene, they've got camera like right on the wedding yeah, ring. that's right. Kind of like, oh, these two married people are about to yeah, do, do yeah. some bad. Eat pie. It was, uh, it was tense. It was a real tense scene. I liked it. Yeah. And then she, she really got off the phone there. and she pulled out the vodka and put a little in that pie crust. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something's... Uh, Baking, now, shall we say? No, my question is: <laughs> yeah, something yeah, is probably. baking. Something is something rising. Heat, perhaps. Something's heating up. Maybe it's about to catch fire. I don't know. Uh, um, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, my question is: Donna knows what Hunt is up to, oh, right? Yeah, but it. she likes the attention, and yeah. she doesn't turn it down. Of course not. Is Donna's character thinking about this? Oh, I think he's definitely like he's the guy. Like we he found is in the, the guy other, who, who got away. Yeah. yeah, we found in the other okay. episodes where it's like that was her possible life. Is like she could have 
she could have been with Hunt and like been going to Italy and like jet setting all yeah, over the yeah. place. Yeah. Uh, and like Hunt is talking about like every day, like how great her work is, mm-hmm. which Gordon never tells her about mm-hmm, how sure. great her work is. Because he's like, busy stealing credit for it. Because he's so busy just stealing all of her work that yeah. he can't tell her how great it yeah. is. Really, she should, that that's on her. Like the best compliment you could give someone is stealing their work and then being like, yeah, it's so great because oh. I did it. Yeah. All right. The best compliment. Well, but also it just, it takes a little bit of the shine off our Donna hero for me for to have a little. Uh, right. Yeah. Nope, that's true. But I mean, all nope. people, all people. <laughs> People are flawed, Cheating on and her she's in. She well, good? she hasn't yet. No, yeah. she hasn't, but she's entertaining. She's entertaining, yeah. or at the very she's least, she's entertaining the attention. She's appreciating yeah, she likes the, attention. the attention. Yeah. All right, we got to move on. Um, so Cameron comes into the office uh, after her whole encounter with uh, with Joe Senior, and uh, she tells Steve that he's fired, <laughs> and he's like, oh, "What? He's hanging a poster." Um, well, she got the idea because Senior was explaining how, how Joe, Joe got promoted once by yeah. threatening his superior. Yeah. yeah. In the same way. In the Genius. same way. Yeah. Genius. I gotta try this. Right. So, uh, <laughs> she goes, you know, she goes over to, to Joe and she's basically like, look, I'm firing Steve and we gotta fire all these, a bunch of these guys because this is the wrong way mm-hmm. to handle, to handle this coding. Okay, we're gonna get it done way faster if you use my method. And he basically challenges her, like, who would you fire? Who would you fire? Who would you keep? Let me see what you would be, do- what you'd be doing. You don't mm-hmm. have management experience. Show me. So she calls out to the whole room. Y'all play adventure last night. Everyone's like, yeah, and, and Steve's like, see, she's already trying to mess up our workflow. <laughs> exactly. Exactly, exactly like that. Was that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and she's like, okay, so uh, who got out of this part of the cave? Did you use the combination? Did you figure out the combination of buttons? All right, who cheated? Who hacked the code? To get out. Live and yo yo. Oh, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And, and a few others. And a few others. And she's like, those are the people we need because they're the people who are going to find the shortcuts in our code and make it stronger and do it faster, who aren't going to worry about the rules or flow charts or any of that garbage. Mm-hmm. Okay? We need punk rock coders. <laughs> we need yeah. edgy people. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so yo yo is so edgy. I don't so know that Lev is eats edgy. cheese out of a can. Yeah, yeah. that's the edgy. Lev is definitely not edgy. Lev is <laughs> he yeah. edgy. He'd be a hipster now. Yeah, yeah. he would be a hipster now. They, they yeah. all would be hipsters now. Yeah, they uh, they probably still are. <laughs> yeah. Um, so in any case, Cameron gets a big win. Steve gets a letter of recommendation. Yeah. We're all we're all thoroughly happy. Good for Steve. Um, but you know, we have this moment with Joe uh, after. I apologize because we're running short on time. Basically, yeah. he goes in and he tries to big dog Gordon around, um, and Gordon basically says nothing that you did because he he went and he talked to the Japanese and it feels like a great moment. Nothing you did mattered. We already had it. We already had it, dude. It, it doesn't it doesn't matter. I also loved the kind of the timing of it where he goes to the hotel to meet the Japanese and he just misses his dad or his yeah. dad just misses him. Mm. Um, in any case, Joe's pre- feeling pretty low at the end of this episode. Mm-hmm. Everything's going the way it should be, but he's not responsible for any of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, true. And that's not the place that he lo- that he wants to live in, ever. Yeah, he wanted to be the hero. Mm-hmm. He still Again. does. I think he does yeah. every day. Yeah. Yeah. He li- and so much so that he manipulates people, uh, everyone around him, so that he can come in and be the hero. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Uh, he did seem pretty genuinely disappointed about, or when he asked her about what his father said, and mm-hmm. she, when he found out that happened. Yeah, I, I mean, I thought this this episode in general he had a lot of father stuff. Donna's father, Joe's father, and then you find out that Cameron has a dad that's that's not there. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, Gordon kind of just undercut the entire moment because it wasn't a win for Gordon. Like Gordon was like just a shame. Yeah, it was a shame that the. The reason why they got the LCD screens is because he had to beg and get on his yeah. knees mm-hmm. and just like do whatever it he took. He sends to all get of his them. guys home. He yeah. can't. He, he can't handle the praise that they were giving him, or he was all ready to take it. Yeah. Uh, until he gets big dogged and he's just like, everyone go home. I'll I'll figure out this heating issue. I, it's certainly not the way that Joe or I guess other characters would have handled it. Mm-hmm. I I did sort of like that. At least he figured out that he really royally screwed up and he had to get in there and. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Humble him. 
himself in, in yeah. you know. Um, and then ultimately we end w with this uh, kind of smart car smashing event where everyone's having a great time smashing a brand new car, which seems ridiculous. A Datsun 300Z. Uh, Datsun! Yeah. Yeah, um, it's a and great car. it's a great car. It's a Japanese car. Though. Rotary it's engine. Not. Yeah, it's, yeah, it is a Japanese car. Yeah. So uh, Joe peels off a hundred Hyundai Spot off his billfold. He climbs up on top of that car and he just starts crushing in the roof. Down. And he makes eye contact with Cameron, and she's never been more turned on in her <laughs> life. Who mm. wasn't? Yeah, that was beautiful. I, I wasn't turned that on. Was not, yeah. I, I appreciated his energy, yeah. but in any case, I'm very, very curious as to where we're going from energy. here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, uh, <laughs> you know, everybody's evolving. I really want to see, let, let's get into predictions because yeah. I'm going to talk about what I want to see. Oh, we we, we have news. Oh, yeah, we, have news. <laughs> we have news. We'll do uh, news and predictions. Oh. TV news. Yeah, yeah nice. we have news. After Buzz TV news. What's going on, everybody? Uh, big news this week in casting. Mm. Our own Scoot, our boy Scoot. Scoot! Scoot, Scoot McNary was cast in a little movie called Batman and Superman. Oh. Sweet. No news yet. Batman yeah. v Superman, Batman Dawn of v Justice. Dawn of yeah. Justice. Yeah, sure. No word yet on who his character will be, but I guess rumors. he'll be ignoring his wife, whoever he is. <laughs> there are rumors about Plastic who his character man. will be. What there, are the there's rumors? There's rumors of The Flash, I heard. <laughs> I definitely heard rumors of Robin. Robin? Robin. That's what? what I heard. I didn't know he was Anyway, in his boy mid wonder. Yes, yeah. Yeah. that's I mean, what I heard. I, I didn't come up with this. I, I heard the Flash. Words. I heard Green Lantern, which would be disappointing to this guy who wants to play the Green Lantern. Yeah. If anybody at Warner Brothers is listening, They'd make a good. I'd John be Stewart. shocked if they yeah, didn't do man. a John Stewart. I also have a little. I'd love if they did a John. A little bit of news. A little bit of news. Um, Colossal Cave Adventure is available online at AMC.com. Everybody, so Sweet. if you want to play the game. You can go online. Um, don't do it at work, because apparently Zixes. you will get things done. Yeah. yeah. Zixes. Yeah. All yeah. right. Uh, let's do predictions. Here we yeah. go. And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. All right, folks. What are we thinking? We're, we're five episodes in. Uh, we're halfway through. Halfway through mm -hmm. the season. We only have ten episodes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, obviously, I want, I want some more empathetic arcs for our main characters, it's, you know, it's hard. They're really, really leaning on viewers' patience. You know, they've been setting a lot of stuff up. Mm -hmm. And we've been, every episode is interesting, every episode is different. Um, and the characters are still compelling. Uh, we had some fun this week. I want more of that fun, yeah. and I want more, I want to love our characters more. I want to have a reason to come back every week and not just to see how they're progressing with the computer, because that's going to take all season. Mm -hmm. I think we're moving past that. Um, in the the little preview, we had, uh, Bosworth telling Cameron that she's the future. I think mm -hmm. we're going to see a lot of forward progress with her character, especially since she took over the manager position. Yeah. And yeah. Showed that she had some, some nice stuff there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Initiative. I think Joe will smash more things probably by yeah, the, we got our by the season. Yeah, we got a destruction. By the season's end, um, I think, I think probably what we will see is kind of, uh, like I like the mirroring between Joe and Gordon where they're both kind of destroying themselves, and I think we'll see mm -hmm. more of that until there's like a breakthrough and we start to mm -hmm. actually see, like Gordon decide to man up and Joe decide to kind of let people in. Yeah. Um, I'm just really excited to see the Bosworth Cameron conversation. Yeah, that was the only thing out of the uh, promo for next week that I was like, "Ooh, I want to see this." All right, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Well, folks, I want to thank you so much for downloading, watching, listening, streaming. You're all the best, Jesse Klein. Where can the people find you? Uh, you can find me at Jess Klein One on Twitter, and if you're a fan of live com comedy, you can come to the Kirk Douglas Theater this Saturday and come see DJ Fawcett. Me and Matt Lieberman are on that team. Yes, nice. it's a it's a sketch show. It's going to be a big deal. This Saturday, July 5th at 8 p.m. at the Kirk Douglas Theater in Culver City. Culver City. Yes, Yale Teagle. The people can find me online at yell.tv. That's Y A E L.tv. There you can find info about the beautiful styling from Sirens Boudoir. You can also find me on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Google Plus at Yell Teagle. That's Y A E L T Y G I E L. And Isaac. 
And you can find me on Twitter at Isaac Johnson, Instagram, The Isaac Johnson. You can check out my album on iTunes called All the Things We Are. All right, folks, you can find me on Twitter at Matt Lieberman, M A T T L I E B E R M A N. You can find all my videos for SourceFed and SourceFed Nerd on YouTube. Here at AfterBuzz TV, I'm everywhere uh, under the dome starting this week. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to join them. Uh, I'm hosting the 100th episode of Comedy on Vinyl, uh, yeah. a podcast of a dear friend, Jason Klom. That's coming out, I think, next week. Very excited about that. We'll see you next week. So excited. Good night. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later. <laughs> <laughs>